We gather this Thursday morning in March, as we close the month of March. We um, are grateful to God for all that God graces us with. Um, my name is Ken Pepin. I'm the rector here at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Fairport, New York. We gather for uh, devotional prayer. So thank you for joining us today. Let us begin. Jesus said, if any of you would come after me, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. O God, let our mouths proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our God is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. Our psalm today is um, a portion of Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have risen up to my neck. I am seeking in deep mire, and there is no firm ground for my feet. I have come down into deep waters, and the torrent washes over me. I have grown weary with my crying. My throat is inflamed, and my eyes have failed from looking for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. More than my lying foes who would destroy me are mighty. Must I then give back what I never stole? O oh God, you know my foolishness and my faults are not hidden from you. Let those who hope in you be put to shame through me. Lord God of hosts, let those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O oh God of Israel. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach and shame has covered my face. I've become a stranger to my own kin and to an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled him myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Thursday, the fourth week of Lent, Henry Nouwen shares with us a reflection called Seeking a Spiritual Atmosphere. We cannot live a spiritual life alone. The life of the Spirit is like a seed that needs fertile ground to grow. This fertile ground includes not only a good inner disposition, but also a supportive milieu. It's hard to live a life of prayer in milieu when no one prays or speaks lovingly about prayer. It is nearly impossible to deepen our communion with God when those with whom we live and work reject or even ridicule the idea that there is a loving God. It is a superhuman task to keep setting our hearts on the kingdom when all those whom we know and talk with are setting their hearts on everything but the kingdom. When we are serious about living a spiritual life, we are responsible for the milieu when it can grow and mature. Although we might not be able to create the ideal context for a life in the spirit, we have more options than we often claim for ourselves. We can choose friends, books, churches, art, music, places to visit, and people to be with that, taken all together, offer a milieu that allows the mustard seed that God has sown in us to grow to a strong tree. Henry Nouwen points out a, another um, quite, quite um, clear experience. Um, that of, of a community, of being surrounded by people who care about us and love us, people who surround us with their, with their support and their love, that we're not in this alone, that um, we are with one another, that we are blessed, that we are encouraged um, in the ways of, of our life, um, in our faith, that we grow deeper with our sense and of appreciation of of all that God brings us, um, and that we are 
you know, we're encouraged when others are with us, right? And that's why we come together for worship. That's why we um, continue to work on building community around us so that we can support one another in this journey. So let us never forget that. Let us keep each other in prayer. Let's open our hearts to each other, continually inviting God into our lives and trusting each other and coming to a sense of God's peace and hope that we can be hope for the world around us and we can be courageously strong in knowing of God's great love for us. So let us pray for one another this day. Holy God, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, Savior, deliver us. Enlighten us with knowledge and understanding that by your teaching that you might live and proclaim your word. Give your people grace to witness to your word in life and the fruit of your spirit. Guard and protect all your children, especially those who are in danger. And we think of the people from Ukraine, especially the children, Lord. Surround them with love and convincing uh, prayerful people who gather to support them, to share with them your love, to be there for them when, again, they've, they've been abandoned. Hear us remember those who have died, especially those who have died for justice and for life and for love. Grant us with them a share in your eternal glory. And give us all true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance and our deliberate sins. And grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your word. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. May God's love fill you this day. Nurture and strengthen you. Surround yourself with people who love you and can tell you that you are loved by God. Know that you are not alone. You are always in his love and care. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Blessings this day. Enjoy the week.